Hello class, it's me again, Teacher Aaron Funa. Today, we are going to talk about endosymbiotic theory. Listen carefully as we unveil the mystery of cells living inside cells. It's good to be friendly with your neighbors, right? Individuals and communities do better if they work together. Cooperation is not just important for humans. Without a bit of interaction among organisms, life as we know it would not exist. Single-celled creatures are the first organisms in our planet. Some of them joined and began living together as one organism, one inside the other. This partnership was so successful that it led to the evolution of many life forms including humans. But before we talk about endosymbiotic theory, let me first review you about the building blocks of life, the cell. So, let's start. All living things are made up of cells. Even though there are many millions of life forms on Earth, all of them are made up of only two basic types of cell, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Eukaryotes are large and more complex. They have a nucleus, which holds strings of linear DNA within a lipid membrane. On the other hand, prokaryotes are small and simple and have rings of circular DNA floating free inside the cell. Prokaryotic cells are some of the earliest life forms on Earth. They first appear in the fossil record around 4 billion years ago. Prokaryotes were around for a long, long time before eukaryotic cells appeared around 1.8 billion years ago. This has led us to think that the ancestor of all eukaryotic cells was a prokaryote. However, to get from a prokaryote to a eukaryote, the cell needed to become a lot more complicated. Eukaryotic cells are powered by special organelles, which work a bit like batteries. All eukaryotes have an organelle called the mitochondrion, which makes energy to power the cell. Plant cells have another type of organelle called a plastid. Plastids can harvest energy from sunlight, like a solar battery. Chloroplasts are a type of plastid. So how did these eukaryotic cells become so complicated? And where did these battery-like organelles come from? Hmm, let's find out. The mitochondrion and the chloroplasts are both organelles that were once free-living cells. They were prokaryotes that ended up inside of other cells or host cells. They may have joined the other cell by being eaten, a process called phagocytosis, or perhaps they were parasites of that host cell. Rather than being digested by or killing the host cell, the inner cell survived, and together they tried. It's kind of like a landlord and a tenant. The host cell provides a comfortable, safe place to live, and the organelle pays rent by making energy that the host cell can use. This happened a long time ago and over time, the organelle and the host cell have evolved together. Now, one could not exist without the other. Today, they function as a single organism, but we can still find evidence of the free living past of the organelles if we look closely. For our next lesson, we will be talking about evidences that support endosymbiotic theory. Today, we have learned that cells have two types, the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic cells. We also learned that mitochondria and chloroplasts may be long long time ago living freely as a single-celled organism. So what are the evidences for that? We will be talking about the evidences later in our next lesson. But before that, please share your comments and answer your assignments. See you next time and have a great day!